So we have a group uh, from Lenore City. We're here at Lenore City High School. Uh, first of all, we have, from going left to right, we have Mr. Joe Spence. We have Paul Roberts. Uh, Ms. Um, R.G. Sarton, who I hadn't met before today, or Mr. Roberts either one, and C.A. Wilson. And uh, first of all, even though I know you're not from Lenore City originally, uh, tell me about how you got to Lenore City. Well, I came here to teach in 1950, in the fall of 1958. I came to teach American history. Miss Carson, who was a long-time teacher here, moved to Farragut, I think, <clears throat> and I had graduated from UT and had already interviewed with the Memphis City Schools. I'm from West Tennessee. Okay. And they had assured me a position, but I'd be teaching with, uh, I'd be teaching at a middle school in, a, in combination with math or science, mm -hmm. which was frightening at the time. <laughs> but you know, you were young and innocent and you didn't know. And so Mr. Buckner called me. I was working at the courthouse in my little hometown of Decaturville. My aunt was the registrar of elections, and it was, I think it was in August, and Mr. Buckner needed a teacher, and he called. He said, can you come for an interview? I said, not this week, because I was typing up. Back then, We've uh, everybody voted at the little community school. Mm. I'm going into detail to tell you, I came to Lenore City and got a job without an interview. Mm -hmm. Mr. Buckner said, well, I'm interviewing somebody tonight, but I don't think he's who I want. I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> well, I was working at the courthouse. Wednesday is when the courthouse closed down. We had an annex off of the county judge's office. We didn't even have a phone. <laughs> and so we had a... We had a little, the phone company was right across the street, so I was typing away and I heard somebody calling, Joe, Joe, you have a long distance phone call. So I had to get up and go over to the telephone office. We just had a central uh, office there. And it was Mr. Buckner telling me that the job was mine if I wanted it. He had gone to, UT, he had talked to UT. They had a UT placement service then. I guess they still do. And uh, he had talked to my faculty advisors and some of my references, and he said, the job is yours if you want it. And he said, when can you come? And I said, well, not until after the election. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, uh, we got the election over with, I think it was on a Thursday. Uh, I bought a car and came to Lenore City Spent Sunday night at the Lee Heights Motel. You know, Used to be one. Yeah, right out there. And didn't have a place to stay because I had to be in school. I got here on Sunday night, I think. And then I went to, I found the high school and went up there. And that we started in service train, training on Monday morning. So I literally came knowing nothing. Wow. But I stayed here for 38 years. <laughs> 38 so. years. <laughs> And uh, you three, I know, are originally from Lenore City, correct? So just tell me a, a little bit about your background here in Lenore City. Okay. Uh, and Joe and Miss Hammondtree were the new generation of teachers. Most of them were retiring at True. that point. <laughs> uh, my parents were originally from Murphy, North Carolina, and my father worked on Hiawassee Dam. And then I had one sister born over there, and my other two sisters and I were born over here. Because he, the, most people worked on Hiawassee Dam came to Fort Loudon. A lot of people came during that transition period, and I was born at home at Brow, down in Browder Holler, and uh, moved several different places. Wound up on Fifth Avenue. My younger childhood went to Nichols School, then to Lower City High School, then uh, later on I uh, went to work at Seal of Heat in Knoxville, and then to Oak Ridge. Okay. And married and got two children. Mm -hmm. Okay, Miss Sorry. Well, I'm a first generation Loudoun County, and my mother was from Knox County. My dad was from Anderson County, and my parents were older, so I, they were in what you would call middle age when I was born, which was a wonderful advantage because I had older brothers and sisters. Um, my sister Elizabeth Holland taught 
in the Lenore City School System for a number of years after having taught over in Middle Tennessee and bringing back the best brother-in-law in the world. But um, my brother Jack and I didn't, high school was the end for us. Um, I have an older sister who graduated from Lenore City High School in 1932 and I graduated in 1962. Wow. <laughs> but um, after uh, high school, I married, and instead of going on to school like I should have, I went to work in the credit department at Sears. Mm -hmm. And that is an education. You find out a lot there, <laughs> especially about human people. And But I have spent my whole life here. I only live a mile from the house that I was born in. I was born at home, too, in Martell, Tennessee. That was We had our own post office. We had our own post office there probably till around... 58-59, but um, I went to Highland Park School and uh, am still very involved in Highland Park School. We have an alumni association there where we raise money and our main thing is the Accelerated Reading Program and then other monies are just mostly the needs they have are mostly for technology, something mm -hmm. tears up or whatever. But where I love was, children. Where was the post office in Martell? The post office, well, you know where Linda Carson? Yeah. Okay. Before you get to Linda's, and you know where the candy factory is? Yeah. Okay. Before you get there, there's a road that if you were, had been at Linda's and you were coming back toward the underpass, the little road kind of veers up this way and would carry you on to the candy factory. But just as it veered up through there, there was a white, just a square white building. And Bernice Kress was the postmistress and you would have had her niece, Brenda Easter, Chuck Easter. Oh yeah, I remember. Brenda. Okay, well their and Chuck, yeah. Okay. Their aunt was the uh, postmistress. And she went off to Missouri or somewhere to a post office conference, met a man and married him and left. <laughs> and then, well, in some records I've read that it originally was a log building and when they built the candy factory it became that, that Armstrong, long building, Armstrong candy, Armstrong candy factory. factory. That long building to, uh, well, was, was the post office at Martell. So I guess it, it they moved it into a, a just a small frame building. It was probably Clarence. It was probably no larger than this room. Am I correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how I remember. Mm -hmm. And we have a picture, I think. Uh, now there is addition to the candy factory now, but it's much larger than the picture we have. By the way, somebody from New York has bought the candy factory. I started asking oh, you right. after Barbara died. What did they do with it? Well, they. I haven't seen them in about two years, but supposedly they were going to move into that building because they came down and that's an it. We've got some of the candy wrappers and the dyes that they printed wrappers on at the museum. Mm -hmm. But I was interested in the post office, and I think if I remember correctly, and I don't know who has that now, Kenneth, uh, no. Kenneth Ward had the commission for, I don't know whether it was the first postmaster of Martell or not. Seems to me it was a matlock, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'll have to. And so, you know, some one of Kenneth's friends bought his house, and I don't know what he did with that. I hope he didn't destroy it. I do too. Who but see, we have. Armstrong house. Who lives in it now? Oh. Our so tight. Mm -hmm. One time. Oh, I think well, they Harry still lives there. Harry still lives there. Does yeah. one still live there? Harry and Diane do. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My little city background, not as bright as these guys, I don't guess, but uh, actually I was uh, I was raised around the crossroads, uh, lived on a farm, never owned a farm. My daddy often said we sharecroppers for sharecroppers. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Mr. Spence, uh, one of my first memories was on the Harrison 
class just across from this high school, and I was telling him that Mr. Harrison run cattle, and where that spring is over there, they used to bottle milk, mm. uh, like the bacon company with the, with the little things you put in the top. And my brother, quite a bit older than me, uh, peddled that in Lenore City. Uh, as I remember, an old A model or a T model little pickup truck. Uh, but most of my life on up until uh, we came off of the farm and we lived on several. The last one was across the road, be honest with you, on the Eldridge place. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jimmy was uh, part of our class. I, I graduated with Paul and Mr. Spencer's one of my teachers. We can call him Joe now. <laughs> well, we can call it. I'll, I'll still give him the honor of Mister, <laughs> because I respect the gentleman. Uh, he and Miss Hamilton both. Uh, Most people uh, still. Matt Brookshire calls me Mister Smith. I said, "Call me Joe," but call me you, Joe. It's just in the habit, you know. Yeah, it, it is in a habit, but you've well, honored, you've honored that Mister. Thank you. Well, you talked about that spring. Yes. So, did they use that? To keep the milk cool? Yes. That, did they yes. have a spring house there? They had a spring house there and, and a little machine, as I remember, that they placed the bottles after they washed them. Uh, washed them. I'll get that right. And and poured this milk. Now, this was raw milk. This wasn't pasteurized milk. Mm -hmm. They had no way of doing that. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was quite a bit of milk that went out of there and Court jugs, as I remember, mm. uh, spread all over Lenore City. Mm. And we finally came off of the farm, and uh, my daddy had started a small business uh, called Lee Heights Monument Company. Actually, Joe said something about uh, he got a motel room at uh, Lee Heights, and that's why our business is Lee Heights. And you had Lee Heights Motel, you had Lee Heights. Uh, Grocery store, Lee Heights Baptist Church. Uh, it was a restaurant. Uh, Lee Heights restaurant. Lee Heights Grill. Lee Heights Grill. Uh, oh, uh, I never. I, Jack I, Tiller, I think. Yes, uh, uh, Bud Baring uh, was Lee Heights. Well, actually, uh, the one downtown there was Lee Heights, or right outside of town, and it was a beer joint. That they were. I've never been in the place. I've never had that problem. <laughs> But there's only two places now that are called Lee Heights, and that's our place and Lee Heights Baptist Church, which is on Martell Road. Uh, when I was young, I had a brother-in-law by the name of Billy Richmond, who was uh, uh, assistant manager of the White Store. Johnny Harrell was the manager, and he talked Johnny into hiring me before I had a Social Security card at the age of 15. And... Uh, I worked there for the whole time I was in high school, uh, and that was the first job I ever had. I think I started out about 40 some cents an hour, uh, and that was during the 50 year centennial, 1957, 1960, I guess I was a freshman that year, and they had an old slab jail. Yeah. If you didn't have a beard, they'd throw you in this slab jail. Uh, uh, and and uh, I, I wanted to grow a beard, but I couldn't. I was too young. Uh, but anyway, I never got thrown in jail. But uh, you might, yeah, have, we have you might have to pay somebody out. Yeah, that's true. There's charity. But, you know, Lenore City has changed a lot. and uh, Actually, we lived uh, around the crossroads most of the growing up. And Brother Joe, he, uh, I went to hear him Sunday as a historian uh, talking about the history of Lenore City and some of the stuff, and talking about the old mill. But I remember we had a mill at the crossroads. Uh, I don't know, Paul, whether you remember that or not. I went to the Eaton's Crossroads, was the grammar school that I attended. Uh, and I know one of the teachers came to Lenore City uh, Miss Baker, yes. I know she remarried. She was my sixth grade teacher, but there was a Norse mill that ground mill there. Uh, probably closed up about the time we that I came. Where was it located? Do you know where the John Garner store set in the hole? 
directly across the road okay. uh, between Highway 11 and Hines Valley. Right. Then if you turn left on Shelfer, uh, uh, Highway 70, there was another store, and that was a Norse store, mm -hmm. Norse grocery store. So they, they had a meal there. That, that was Mrs. Norris that had an antique shop out there. You are correct. Was that her husband? And then Mrs. I, T. J. Norris. I assume. And then there was a lady. If if you shot straight across ninety five, this is four three twenty one was in. Yeah. Uh, one of the school teachers that taught at uh, at Nichols. Who her name? Lee Simpson. Simpson. Oh, Simpson. Miss Simpson. Miss Lavonne. Lavonne Simpson. Yes. I knew her well. I mowed her yard. Wonderful lady. Beautiful a very lady. prim and proper lady. Yes, she now, was. Now, this gentleman was up at the shop the other day, and we got a board about as wide as this uh, backboard behind him here, and probably two-thirds as wide. We found that in, in the old church that I attend, and still do, Kingston Pike Baptist Church found it, and it was an overhead shot, and it shows from the car works all the way to the crossroads. Oh, my goodness. Yes. You need to stop by, Paul. Yeah, okay. I'd like to see that. And I pulled it out. We tried to make a picture of it. It didn't, didn't turn out too good. But you can see the interstate with the 321 bridge, but no road on either side. <laughs> so it was taken in that period of time. The interstate stopped at old 95 mm -hmm. at that time. And of course, that was up until, uh, I guess they started 321 around the early 60s. Uh, so anyway, it uh, was still gravel. Well, it was still gravel up until uh, way on into the sixties. Well, yeah, up in the yeah. upper sixties. You're correct. Because when I but I think they started building around sixty two, sixty three. I I got out. I got drafted in uh, uh, sixty one. Uh, they throwed me an MP situation over in France. And uh, no work. I wound up on Cocoa Police Department uh, until my father got pretty sick in '66, and I I came back and been in Lenore City ever since. Tried to run a business uh, for the last 55 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, he started. has he has the original plat book of the Lenore City Cemetery. That is correct, and you're the only gentleman that I let have it out of the office. Well, there was a, oh, somebody from, he's, I think Dr. Fout was his grandfather, yes. Ben Clark. He's, he lives in Atlanta now, and he's he has done voluminous history of the Fouts family and all, and he's very, he's been a big donor at the East Tennessee Historical Society. Yes. So... I guess it was Steve Cottom who works there, asked me, he said, do you know Clarence Wilson? And I said, yes, I think I do. I hadn't seen him in years. And he said, well, Ben, I guess Ben maybe had been out there. And he said, he has the original plat books, and you've got a record of the people who bought the lots and everything. Yes. And that's a valuable <clears throat> genealogical record. And Steve said, well, do you think you could get that? And I said, well, I don't, I'll try. Mm -hmm. And I went out there and found out that he was a former student of mine. And he trusted. Steve said, if you will get it and bring it up here directly to me, we'll put it on microfilm. And, we, and, and so that the McClung collection, which is a wonderful genealogical mm -hmm. collection, has that record. And I promised my my life, and he said, yes, if you'll bring it right back. I think I kept it three weeks and brought it back, and we have that record. And they made a record for uh, the Lenore City Library, who was not interested in it. But there is a copy at the Loudoun County Library. And I have, a, we have a copy at the museum. I keep, I keep, there's two of those books. I keep them in the safe. And they gave you, a, I think they gave you a copy of the microfilm, too. I think they did, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. We kind of changed things around later. Uh, people would come in and wonder where their people were buried. And, 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 you know, you had these names. 
uh, and then they want individual graves, and you just don't know unless yeah. they're marked. So uh, I think uh, in the mid '70s, I've been president of the board of the cemetery and Lakeview yeah. of that committee since the mid '70s. So we started yeah. to every every time we had a deceased, uh, we made forms right. and, and we put in. in certain. Uh, oh, I know Paul. Yeah. He I was in Paul. the first class. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, that that the second class that you second taught. Second class you taught. Second class you taught. Because we were in the same yeah. year. He graduated in 1960. Yes, you taught me. You taught me freshman and sophomore. Sophomore. I had both freshman and sophomore first year of Kenny. Yes. And I was I had all sophomore. one of them rascals schools you taught. You know, I remember these kids better than I remember the kids ahead of you, too, because I see y'all in the hall and see you around about a whole year. And I can remember names of, I think all of them, but I, when you teach 50 years, you learn some names. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here finally. <laughs> I made a grand injury, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> okay, Miss Hamiltree, if, if you would tell us just a little bit about your uh, background from Lenore City. I went to high school at, the, and, at part of grade mm -hmm. school at Green Bay. So I'm really a Greenback girl. That's where I belong. <laughs> I've been there. And uh, uh, then went to Tech uh, because my mother says because they have swimming pool. <laughs> Indoor swimming pool. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what she always said. <laughs> and uh, then I went to, uh, this is, it does, uh, this happens to the teacher all the time. The principal, they had trouble here. Seth Hammond, I went to Seth Hammond. He looked me over and he said, well, you look pretty here, let's give teacher his head. And I didn't know anything about this head. I don't want to hear head was English and the history of the that was good. But I taught physics for two years and then I came to the North City. Is that enough? Yeah, sounds good. Well, now you live right across the river. You, yeah. you come across that ferry a lot, I'm sure, Walk, to the North City. Oh, more or than I do. Yeah. More than I so like she to. knows a lot about the North City. Okay. We'll oh, get, yeah. We'll get into those things here in a little bit. Yeah, I okay. just want to get some of your backgrounds. Well, well that's enough to know what the schools are into. <laughs> <laughs> so your family's from Lenore City? My, my dad is. He's from Lenore City. And my mother's from Rome County. Okay. So we're, we're natives. And I'm, I know a lot about Lenore City. Okay. Well, we'll get into some of those things here in just a minute. 